Okay, from teeth grinding at night without a night guard. You can see how these teeth have worn on the anterior. Slide forward, Charlie. Way forward with your lower jaw and keep your teeth together. Go back a little bit. Just what you were doing. While, there we go. See how they perfectly fit together. So from nighttime grinding, he's done this. He now has a dental sleep apnea snoring device, which will prevent the tooth-to-tooth -to -tooth contact. Because if we bonded these chipped and size ledges without the dental sleep apnea snoring device or a night guard, he'd break them off in a night or two. So that's one of the things when you're bonding chipped upper and lower anterior teeth, you've got to be sure that the patient has a night guard or a dental sleep apnea snoring device. If you look at these incisal edges of the maxillary central incisors, you can see he's worn the teeth into the dentin of the teeth. Got these odd shapes, but they, they mesh perfectly with the lower anterior teeth where he's done the same thing. You can see how he's worn those into the dentin of the teeth. Now, if you place your composite just on the teeth as they are right now, it wouldn't it wouldn't stay he'd grind that off so you've got to make just a tiny little groove in the dentin with a very small round burr you can see that's a half that's a half round burr not much just a little bit you don't have to anesthetize the teeth do this procedure but you've got to just very lightly make a little divot or a little tiny foxhole You say, what's the reason for the procedure? That dentin is dark, and so it makes those incisal edges look dark. The patient smiles. Now, you can't lengthen the teeth with bonded composite. You're just covering up the chipped areas in the dark dentin. If you try to increase the length of the teeth with bonded composite, the patient will break that off. So you can't make the bonded composite restoration any longer than the longest part of the existing tooth. In other words, if that's the, the tallest part of the tooth right there, that's as high as you can have the bonding extend coronally. If it extends any higher than that, you will chip it off when he's taking a nap or just going through the day because that movement, that tooth-to-tooth -tooth movement is his acquired movement. At some point, you know he's going to take a nap probably and not wear his sleep apnea appliance, dental sleep apnea snoring appliance. He's going to have tooth-to-tooth -tooth contact and he'll break it off. So you know if you see a patient a year from now and he's chipped or worn this bonding off, he's not wearing his night guard or his dental sleep apnea snoring device. Very few people wear their teeth like this during the day. It occurs at night when they're sleeping with that unconscious bruxism teeth grinding. So you can see that's just a tiny little movement. Now we've got this little bit right here. We also want to improve. So I'm just barely going to freshen the surface of that edge. Not much, just barely. Just so you've got a fresh surface. It's like gluing two boards together. You want the surface to be fresh, not, not dirty. Okay. This is 38% phosphoric acid. We're using to etch the teeth. And I'll leave this on there for about 45 seconds. So take it off in the order of the teeth that you placed it on first. Since I placed it on the maxillary centrals first, we'll remove that first. But you can etch enamel pretty much as long as you want. I'll etch enamel normally a minute, 45 seconds to a minute. And dentin 
you don't etch as long. You'll etch that anywhere from 15 seconds to 45 seconds. So we're timing that over here. It's about 15, yeah, mm -hmm. about 15 seconds. As you section this off first with your aspirator, and then to have the patient turn their head to one side, usually toward the assistant. Rinse that off with you. And most of the time, I use a rubber dam for almost everything. I usually don't use it for this. I just isolate the teeth with two by twos because it's difficult. And if you haven't anesthetized the teeth, it can be uncomfortable placing a rubber dam if it pinches that gingival tissue. So it's not a bad idea, but this works well. So I'm just going to dab those teeth. I don't want to desiccate them. Charlie, turn back this way, please. This is primer adhesive. You always want to blow off the primer adhesive because it has an acetone carrier for the primer, and that carrier can compromise the bond strength. So blow that off and put a two by two right on the two so you blow that excess primer adhesive off onto the two by two and you don't get it all over the tissue and on the on the teeth. We'll pop some floss through the contact. Be sure there's not any primer adhesive in there. Then we're going to cure that. You don't have to cure it long. Five, ten seconds is fine. Then we're going to use flowable composite. There's a degree of pressure working doing this on beautiful women. It's always, there's always a little more pressure working on beautiful women, but there's quite a bit of pressure, don't you think, to working on somebody this handsome? Because you've got to get it right. Okay, so just, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on that flowable composite, get it into the, that little tiny trench. I'm going to cure each of those for 40 seconds. Get initial cure and then 40 seconds apiece. My light timer is set on 20. You don't have to cure it that much, but you can't over cure, but you can under cure. So go ahead and give it 40 seconds. Now we'll place our primer adhesive on these two. Very important that you prepare the patient for how good they're going to look when you get through with this. You don't want them to be shocked if you've overdone it and they're too beautiful or too handsome. I think this patient is psychologically stable enough to handle the burden, as I said previously. And so pop that floss again and then always, unless you're seating a veneer, always cure the primer adhesive after you've blown it off prior to placing the filled resin. You don't cure the primer adhesive when you're placing a veneer, you just blow it off. You want to keep the tip of the syringe in the material and put a little bit of pressure so it forces it down, kind of rub it, so it forces it down into that little tiny trench in the dentin. So the objective is that the composite is not any taller and sizely than the tallest part of the presenting tooth. In other words, those lower central incisors are shorter than the lower lateral incisors. I can't increase the height of the centrals to the height of the laterals or he'll break the composite off because that's not in his eccentric movement pathway, glide plane, you might say. Now, you can lengthen the teeth a bit with veneers but the patient has to be very conscientious if you do lengthen them with veneers and be sure that he wears the dental sleep apnea appliance or night guard every time he sleeps or takes a nap or he'll grind his teeth in that pattern and could fracture something. So we're not trying to make the teeth all the same length with bonded composite. We're just trying to get rid of the chipped 
fractured in sizal edges so it looks smooth and symmetric. Again, I'm curing each of these 40 seconds at least. This is a fine chamfer diamond that I start with. Just do the gross reduction. Same thing down here. It's hard to get a disc in there to polish it. The teeth have, are a little crowded. This is a show food disc. Just polishing that the facial part, and you always want the disc to polish from the composite to the tooth, not the other way around. Down here, same thing. Notice how we drip water on it. it just lubricates it a little bit it seems polish a little better it was polishing from the composite to the tooth these lip protectors are really valuable protecting the lip keeping that out of the way I'm going to stand up and look at this from the front. It just evens things up. So the incisal edge is not, the teeth are not all the same length, but you don't have that broken look. Dry it off so you can see where the part of the ends and the tooth begins. Okay, let's check the interproximal of this. This is unwaxed floss. have a little tightness and a contact. This is just a 12 fluted carbide burr. Get a little composite in that contact. Then once you finish polishing and check his occlusion. Charlie, bite on your back teeth please. Tap, tap, tap. Open. Bite on your back teeth again. Tap, tap, tap. Bite down on your back teeth again, Charlie. Open. Do that again. Open. Remember, you never want the four anterior teeth contact before the cuspid, the bicuspids, and the mesial or the first molar. You always want to be able to pull shim stock through the four anterior teeth and the second molar because that can create a TMJ problem. This is a sealer. Okay, then I'm going to take this number eight strength shank, straight shank round burr and open up his dental sleep apnea snoring device just a tiny, tiny bit in the size of ledges. Doesn't take much because remember you haven't lengthened the teeth. The, the length determinant is the longest part of the incisely of the existing tooth. Let me demonstrate that in these books, Josh. Okay, so if you look at those teeth right there, I can't make the tooth any longer than the longest incisal part of the natural tooth. Same thing down here where you've got those fractured edges. I can't make it any longer than that. In these teeth, I can't make those teeth any longer than that part right there. If you do, they'll break it off. So the pre-existing incisal length of the tooth determines how much incisal composite can be placed on the tooth. You can't make it any longer than that. Charlie, how's your bite feel when you bite your teeth together? Does that feel tall at all on the front teeth or does that feel normal? Let me do one more thing. Now this is a Shofu rubber wheel. This is great for the palatal or the lingual edges because it doesn't 
cut tooth it really polishes that sizal palatal edge or the sizal lingual edge. How's that feel when you bite together? Pretty normal. Let's check this out. Let's stay open. Don't bite. Let's see. Hang on just a second. I'm going to take those headphones off. These I've just loosened that up just a little bit. Bite down. How's that feel? Good. Good.